So I know we only have 30 minutes, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, so we will have more people show up as we continue as, as it normally does. Um, and so... Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining our lunchtime session um, with Loan Desk. Um, today, we're going to be talking about non-QM loans and what all the fuss is about. So I'm going to hand over the floor to Joseph. And so, Joe, take it away. Right on. Thanks, uh, Eli. I appreciate it. Um, hey, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. So non-QM loans. What is all the fuss about? That's the topic for today. And it's uh, it's really an interesting time to go over non-QM loans because right now affordability is tough. It's hard for sometimes folks to get in a home and non-QM loans can really be an avenue for somebody to actually qualify who cannot qualify. Uh, so first to, to back up, like what is a qualified mortgage? So essentially, uh, after the financial crisis, there was a whole bunch of legislation on regulating mortgages. And uh, under the Dodd-Frank Act, there are certain requirements that made a loan a qualified mortgage. So like one of the requirements was you had to have the ability to repay the loan. Um, that's is ATR. So that was like a requirement. So for example, let's say you have... Uh, a borrower who is, um, let's just say it's a it's a spouse recently divorced, and they um, let's say have a, a million dollar home and a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage, but no income, and they want to refinance uh, their two hundred thousand dollar mortgage. Well, under QM rules, they wouldn't be able to qualify because they're not meeting the ability to repay, even though clearly that's a very low risk loan because there's $800,000 of equity. So that's kind of like a just specific example of, of like qualified mortgage. Like every loan has to be a qualified mortgage. But the way that is, I think is sometimes best to think about non-QM loans and QM loans is actually to focus more on there's these government sponsored enterprises. And I, I go over this all the time with home buyers because a typical home buyer will think of of a mortgage similar to a savings and loan process like hey please work with me um you know i'm a good person etc um i i always repay my mortgage and i tell them hey there's three things to qualify for a loan it's um you have to have credit so you have to have a demonstration of making payments on time you have to have income and you have to have assets. Those are the three things to qualify for a mortgage. Now, the assets might be very, very low, the minimum requirement, but there's got to be, you know, something like you just um, to uh, to be able to qualify. Um, but there's there isn't like um, a decision. So sometimes borrowers will talk to me like, you know, I just actually had a conversation with a borrower on, over the weekend, and she was elderly, and she's like, you know, I, I always do this. Well, guess what? She didn't have any assets. Like it was like a mattress money situation. I'm like, well, you got to move your money into the into the bank account, and then once we have it seasoned, then we'll be able to use those. Like, I, it doesn't matter like what you're telling me; it's just going off the guidelines of government sponsored enterprises. So we have three major GSEs. We've got Fannie, Freddie, which deal with conventional loans, and then we have Ginny, which is actually not even a GSE; it is a government. Like this is a government body that's buying FHA, VA, USDA loans. So you have Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginny Mae. They're buying these these loans, and um, many most of the loans will fit those those requirements. So you, if you have a conventional loan down to six hundred and twenty credit score, you have an FHA loan. Well, FHA will actually go down to five hundred credit score. Uh, you have to have then the income requirements, the asset requirements. Many loans meet those requirements. And this is where, uh, as mortgage originators, if you're operationally efficient, you can really undercut the market. So this is kind of what we're trying to do with loan desk. Like those type of loans, we can get very aggressive on interest rates because it's all about your operational effic efficiency. We're basically brokering loans to the government and less about having the low cost of capital, which is kind of 
the advantage from a bank perspective. Um, so let's say you have a deal that cannot meet the requirements of conventional Fannie, Freddie, or Ginny. So those investors won't do the deal. Well, you have this privatized market. And this is kind of what I think of non-QM. So you can say, you, you'll hear non-QM and QM, but the way that I really think about it is QM loans, these are loans that, that the government will buy. Fannie, Freddie, GSEs, Ginny, they will buy those loans. Going to get the low rate. It's basically subsidized because the government has a, a heavy hand in this. Non-QM loans, these are privatized. These are loans that Fannie, Freddie, Ginny will not buy. So if the loan doesn't meet the requirements, potentially you have an outlet. So I'm going to just go over some, and I hope this is kind of interactive because I see we have some folks on the call who actually have a lot of experience with, with non-QM loans. Classic example of a non-QM loan, and one that I have experience with, is a self-employed borrower under Fannie, Freddie, Ginny to qualify for a mortgage as a self-employed applicant, you need to present your last two years tax returns. So, uh, and in some cases, it could only be one tax return. So if you have a history of five years of, of self-employment, then sometimes the automated underwriting will only ask for one tax years, but you need to have, uh, let's just say you have to have use the income from the tax returns. There's no other way of calculating income under Fannie, Freddie, and Ginny other than the tax returns. On a non-QM loan, basically a loan that's privatized, doesn't follow those guidelines, they've created, there's a secondary market and investors who will buy these loans called a, a bank statement loan. So a bank statement loan is where you can, uh, instead of using the tax returns, to qualify that self-employed applicant. You use either the business bank statements or the personal bank statements, let's just say the business bank statements, and see the deposits that go into the account. And then that is used for qualification of income. I will give you a, a, a story. So, I mean, it, you know, basically a, a deal story. So I had a, a, a client who had been turned down by an internet lender where he got his pre-approval. Um, he had gone in and put in his income. He did very well for himself, but he only had one year of tax returns. And even though he had been self-employed for two more than two years, when it when he went into contract on a one point eight million dollar home in Oakland, that lender ended up denying the application because he did not meet the requirements. Um, of using the tax returns as income. I was able to qualify him with a bank statement program where we went back and used last 12 months bank statements. And then he was able to show enough income and that loan ended up closing. So this is an example where potentially that, that borrower could have been denied by a lender and they stopped right there and, and he never ended up acquiring that home. Um, so it's really, really important to, to know about these options because guess what? Like the bank or the lender they're working with, they're not really telling them like, oh, you might be able to qualify elsewhere. They're like, oh, you know, you don't qualify. You need two years tax returns, get your other tax returns filed, and then we'll work with you. That's probably what they're saying. You know, good ones may may tell them. So that's that's program number one, big statement one. Does anyone else have a non-QM program that they want to shed light? Can anyone think of any other mortgage program that would be classified as a non-QM loan? All right. Well, then you're in luck because I'll go over there. another one. DSCR. DSCR. So basically, this is a debt service coverage ratio for an investment property. If you were to buy an investment property, you can do that under Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. You can't do it under FHA, but you can do that under Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, get a low 30-year fixed rate, done hundreds of them. But often you have clients who are not able to um, qualify under Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac 
uh, ability to repay, so that under the income calculation. So there might be a maximum DTI of either 45 or 50 percent. It could be higher than that. What do you do? Well, there's a basically an investor cash flow program. So it doesn't meet the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac programs uh, requirements. But what you're what the the investor is uh, indicating is by putting 20% down on on a investment property, we assume that essentially the the cash flow will cover the mortgage, and therefore you don't need to show your income. So you you um, basically will put the 20% down, and that alone is enough to for to meet the ability to repay requirement. So this is why it's a non QM loan because they're not following the Dodd Frank. QM guidelines, which have the ability to repay. So um, this is a program that is great for investors because you can do a loans up to three million. Um, it's based on the property cash flow and not the personal income. The um, properties can be held in in an LLC and not necessarily in the name. There's no uh, limit to the number of properties. So Fannie Mae has has uh, a limit to ten finance properties. Um, it can be interest only. Uh, it could be a non warrantable condo. Um, it could be a condo tell. It could be um, um, even not like non permanent residents can can purchase. So lots of um, lots of advantages. By the way, I'll I'll share my screen. So um, the partner that I've used a lot for non QM loans. It's called Angel Oak Mortgage Solution, Solution, Solutions. Would you like it if I kind of just shared what kind of what their website looks like? Because they have a lot of information on on non QM loans. Would that be helpful? Absolutely. Go right ahead. Okay. Yeah. So this is so I've worked with Angel Oak now for five years on on basically, and they are not the only game in town. There, you know, the the benefit of Loan Desk is we have a lot of different lenders competing for the loan. Think of it as like a hotels.com, you know, like give me the loan, give me the loan, give me the loan. And then we get to choose who's the best and who's offering the lowest rates. Um, but you can see here under mortgage programs, we have the DSCR. So without hitting the drop down, anyone want to guess on another type of non QM loan? I actually just went through this uh, two months ago. I, I had this, this, this loan type. All right, it's an ITIN mortgage. So again, we're defining this as, as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have certain requirements that have to be met in order to be able to purchase the mortgage from the lender. And it's great when it does because those loans close so fast and the rate is low. And so we want to get every loan that meets those requirements to fit those. But sometimes you have clients that don't meet those requirements. So an I-10 mortgage loan is when a borrower can purchase a property without a social security number. So this is somebody who um, is not just like, is a non-permanent resident. Um, and so it can... Now, you can see here with Angel Oak, they have a credit score starting up to 640 and up to 75% LTV. We actually work with a lender that can get, go even higher. I think so maybe even to 90 or even 95% loan to value on I-10 mortgage loan. And this enables someone to purchase the property before they are fully residing in the United States. Big opportunity here. Um, you know, given immigration pattern to market I-10 loans. All right, let's go through um, another product. So we did I-10, okay, asset qualifier. So kind of that first example that I gave, you know, sometimes, so Fannie does have an asset qualification uh, income requirement. So let's say if you have a million dollars in the bank and you're applying for a $200,000 mortgage, Okay, uh, under Fannie Mae, you might be able to get that one through under the ability to repay rules, um, but it's very strict. And 
often if um, you have um, a client you know who doesn't qualify but they have an you know you think they have enough assets non qm could be an uh, an option where you can do an asset qual qualifier loan where essentially you're not requiring employment or income to meet the ability to repay you're just using based on the assets so you think about you know i always try to think of you know who's like the target audience who's the target customer I think it's pretty clear it's retirees, right? You know, maybe they, you know, they have a lot of money in the bank or in, you know, investments, but they don't have a lot of income. It's like a social security or a pension. And, um, but maybe they want to acquire a, you know, buy a, a property, you know, so rather than, um, you know, doing all cash or they, you know, um, they can use, um, they can use their assets as income. Uh, I also think uh, this comes up a lot whenever you have um, a divorce, you know, and someone wants to qualify for, you know, refinancing the mortgage into their um, into their own name. You know, this this could be a, the the right program uh, to remove a spouse from from the loan. Uh, depending on how the income you know shakes out with you know with the divorce, so th I've had this situation before. But ask that qualifier. So it's just important to kind of go through you know different um, loan programs and and what where my mind always heads at is like I try to put myself into the uh, into the shoes of of you know like the wider audience and think okay well how can I um, basically use these these programs to um in marketing because the thing is like b of a wells uh rocket like the large lenders you know they're not actually you know well, some of them are doing bank statement loans but for the most part they're not doing a lot of these loan programs so niche products are a great way to um to be able to um you know, find new customers and especially like the asset qualifier, like working with divorce attorneys and, um, um, you know, obviously DSCR, you, you know, you're working with investors and sometimes working with it, accountants can be, you know, very helpful with that. Uh, but I just wanted to share that these niche programs exist. Loan, Loan Desk has access to these niche pro programs and it's important the, the way that I would basically summarize, um, you know, who can qualify for a mortgage in, in the U.S. is, you know, on the on the Fannie and Freddie and Jenny, the, you know, for those, the down payment can be as low as 1%, 3%, VA is 0%. But if on the privatized, you know, put yourself in the shoes of, hey, if I'm making this this uh, loan myself, essentially, if, if a client has funds for a down payment, we can usually find a mortgage solution for them. Um, so if they're self-employed, you know, on the bank statement loan program, you know, it's up to 90% loan to value. Like that's pretty high, like for, uh, you know, for self-employed applicant. So, um, you know, and it, they could be potentially 1099. We even work with a lender, which just P and P and L. So not even looking at bank statements, you're just looking at a P and L. So again, if they can put them, put funds for down payment, we can usually find a mortgage for them. And a lot of that has to do with these non-QM products. And where I would suggest is using these, these unique products in your uh, marketing to, um, to try to attract new business. All right, so I'll pause there. And uh, anybody have like a non-QM story they wanna share? One that um, maybe went well, didn't go well, I have a question, if that's okay. Of course. Um, so I'm sort of running into one of my first, um, I guess, um, I, I typically do VA loans, but I have someone who is self-employed but also pays herself W-2. She's having trouble get, getting her 2021 documents together. So I'm kind of interested in, you know, looking at these alternatives because she's interested in FHA. Um, the thing is though, none of the QM programs will allow a down payment that low. Is that correct? 
Yeah. So like bank statement loan, you're looking at 90% down. I mean, sorry, uh, 10%, 10% down, 90% um, potentially maybe a gift if, uh, I don't know if that's a, that's an option, but because these are privatized loans, it, it, the down payment requirement is higher than, than FHA. How, um, how do the um, rates compare for these? Rates are, Great question. I should have covered this. So rates are higher. So here, let me share a screen and we can kind of run through a scenario. Sure. Um, I don't know if any, anyone saw, but um, there was a big swing in the market today for, uh, for rates. Um, we're now seeing on loan desk side, we're now on, on the Fannie Mae 30 year fix. We're seeing rates now down to, um, under 7%, which is exciting. So let's run the numbers here. So let's do... Could I give you my scenario, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So what... Um, I'm looking at my thing, so I can't really see, see yours. So could you just... Oh, let me know I'm sorry. You? No, no, no. I, 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 can, I can see it on my end, but if I go into a different window... Um, here, I, let me... I shared the wrong screen here. Okay, what's the what's the purchase price? Five fifty. Okay. Let me just hypothetically put ten percent down. Right, because otherwise so, we're not going to get anything. Yeah, we're not going to get anything. So that'd be a four ninety five loan amount. Do you know the credit score? Ah, uh, yes, it is six forty two. Yeah, this would be for sure FHA would be the way to go. Oh, okay. Uh, but let's we'll run the numbers here so we can see. Okay. Uh, purchase, and we'll say. So, uh, do you know what type of business they own? Um, home care. Okay. Let's just say it's business bank statements. It's gonna be owner occupied. All right. So, um, you can see here. Well, first, I think we're getting a blocker. And again, we, we have a marketplace, so this would be you know just a starting place. But I think it looks like the uh, max loan to value is at 75 based on the credit score. If I were to change this, let's just see what happens. Okay. Yeah, now we're getting 90% mm. uh, LTV. So at that credit score, yeah. it'd be great to figure out how to do this FHA. Now, for um, your client um you said they're having trouble with 2021 they haven't filed their 2021 tax returns because we're all uh, no they have they just can't find any of their paperwork okay well if they're self-employed um mm -hmm. they should be able to you know obtain their you know their irs do you know they know who Transcript. they file with yeah do they go with mm -hmm. like h and r block Turbo yeah, time. I was I was letting them know that they should contact their tax preparer just to see if they have additional copies, but I think she misplaced her stuff. <laughs> so so it's yeah. getting it's taking a little bit of time. But like I said, I was kind of interested in knowing what these alternatives are for borrowers because I do have another client who, um, you know, he works for the city of San Francisco. He gets a W two job, but he has two other sources of income, and he's an entrepreneur. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just trying to see like what other options we might have besides just the traditional conventional. Yeah. Well, uh, he, you know, in this case, you know, your SF client and perhaps they can qualify, you know, let's say if they want to do a 90% loan to value. So you can see here, you know, mm -hmm. you're looking at rates here at 90%, um, you know, up to 10.625 rate. So. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously mm -hmm. paying this and the way that you want to think about this is like it's a bridge loan because yeah. like so that client that um, bought in Oakland that was turned down that I work with after um, he made 12 on time payments to Angelo, we refinanced the mortgage because by then uh, he had already you know had, you know, he was able to qualify. He had two, two years tax returns. And so right. um, this is kind of how like when, whenever I'm talking to a a client at, you know about a, these non QM loans, they're, they're, you know, their eyeballs are going to pop out of their sockets when they look at the rate and payment. But I'm like, hey, this is, this gets you in the home, 
And then you got to work on getting your stuff in order to, to get out of the, the mortgage. Otherwise you lose the house you want, right? It's not going to stick around. Yeah, so. exactly. Mm-hmm. So like it's a, it's a bridge loan, you know, bridge yeah. loans, like that's, you know, there isn't a prepayment penalty. Um, so, you know, get into the home that you want and then, yeah, it's kind of painful, but, you know, make 12 months of payments and, and refinance mm-hmm. your mortgage into, you know, into, you know, fixed rate or, you know, whatever, a Fannie Mae jumbo loan. But for that one that uh, that you were mentioning about the tax returns, I really think, um, you know, it, like don't, she should not let her inability to find uh, her stuff, uh, you know, and especially if she's filed 2022, mm-hmm. she might, she might, you know, you'll see on an FHA loan, you know, 640 is fine, but like, mm-hmm. you know, any sort of privatized solution at 640, they're like, hey, you have really kind of low average, poor credit. Um but whereas FHA would treats it like kind of like good credit, you know, mm-hmm. you're not paying more in the mortgage insurance. So anytime you have a client that's like below 680 credit score, I, I always think FHA. Okay. Yeah. That's what we were targeting. So that's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ela. Well, I appreciate you having me on for non QM. What's all the fuss about? If you have any questions, um, Feel free to reach out to me or or Aislin, and uh, we will be happy to you know shop our marketplace for um, you know any sort of solution. Awesome! Thank you so much, you guys. Um, I hope everyone has a great rest of their Tuesday, and we'll see you again next time. Bye bye. Thanks, Eva. Bye.